Good evening, good evening. Good evening, church. Good evening. Be happy out. Give me some noise. Good evening, church. Good evening. I may be looking for my wallet. Your voice works too. What's going on, guys? You see, I always start off saying that because um, I want to remind you that you are the church. I'm probably a broken record, but sometimes when God, you see, when God says you have to renew your mind, you need to renew yourself and be reminded of the same things every single day. You see, nothing changes. The word of God is the same today, is the same yesterday, the same tomorrow. Who believes that? Amen. You see, I got to start speaking the word of God right now. I need you guys to get on fire. You see, my cousin, that's my cousin Isaac. He said, let's all move up to the middle. It's because he has a plan. Now, I'm going to take over that plan. So the first song is a song that you get to dance. Okay? <laughs> I know that was pretty lame, but that's not a lot of dance. <laughs> not like that. Okay? And uh, I want to just encourage you guys to get up. Let's stand up right now. If you're shy, then it's okay. I still want you to stand up. Thank you. You know, usually uh, the pastors are, it's okay. But you know, I, I go, I'm 30 minutes here and then I sit down. Uh, I just want to encourage you guys because, you know, one thing that the Lord taught me and you know, put in my heart was that, you see, even if someone is silent next to you, your worship could break open their prison door. You see, because when Paul and Silas were in the prison, right, they, 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 they were praising God so much, they were shouting out hymns, they were singing hymns, that the, the whole yeah, prison had an earthquake. Now, that wasn't because uh, there was an earthquake happening, because the praises went up, and the, and the power of God came down. You see, so there's someone next to you today, and even within yourself, that God is trying to set free. I know I need some of my doors open today. I need to be set free from a lot of things. You see, but that's because I know that I'm in need of Jesus. I can't do this on my own. So today, let's just join together. Let's walk as a body right now. 
Let's dance on Let's dance as a body, okay? And uh, the first song, if you know, please sing along. If you don't, it's okay. Just dance, okay?
Yeah, I'm in my 20s, so sometimes I feel like I can't understand technology. But... Uh, this song, I'm gonna teach it to you. Hillary, I'm sorry, I know it's not in the list, but check this out. I need to repeat after me, okay? Jesus Messiah. Jesus Messiah.
God says, see, I want to tell you right now that when you say the name of Jesus, the enemy can't help but to flee. You see, Jesus only had to walk, and he only had to be there. He only had to, the demons only saw him, and they already recognized who he was. You see, that's the power that we have. We have the king inside of us that when people, when the enemy, hold this, hold this. When the enemy sees us, they understand that the king lives inside of us. We need to be able to walk in that authority, understanding fathership, sonship, daughtership. You see, because every single daughter in this place, you see, daughter. You see, you are a daughter of a king. You need to understand that when you when you recognize identity, then you understand the royalty that's behind the person that is the person in the mirror. You see, when you look at yourself, you understand I am royalty. I am love. There is gentleness inside me. There is kindness. There is value. There is worth inside of me because I am a daughter of a king. You see, and that goes the same way with us guys. We are prince. We are princes of the king. We have value as well. You see, it's not because of who we are to someone. It's because of who God made us to be.
when you're better than my greatest desire, God. Hallelujah. When you're better than any woman, God. Yes, Lord. When you're better than any relationship, God, that I can dream of, God. Well, there's no place I'd rather be, God.
went up to him and said, yo, you gonna freestyle right now a cappella? You know, trying to troll. But he said yes. Uh, he took me <laughs> up for the, for the challenge. And here he is, our brother Manny. Manny. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Yeah. All right. All right, I'm not gonna lie, this is like super random, but uh, you know, I love, I love the Lord, I love music, so I just, I just gotta let the opportunity matter. Amen. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna do a piece. I'm gonna do this piece. This was a piece I wrote a while ago, you know, just something about my testimony and where I came from, where God's brought me from. Look, all I hear is silence. As I see on the streets coming in silence. Have you ever heard the echo of the fireworks before the 4th of July? The streets are fire first. I've been around for a short time. The cruelty of my youth never seems to my mind. So I find it scary that I could be buried. Play of young black men, resting in cemeteries, bear my same name, and share my same pain. I know that hell is real, where killers kill, and a drug sell for a daily meal. Do you think that we went up a hill? Or you can still see at the top, keeping your brother on the hill. Well, I think it's time that I open up. No more silence for the cover trash to overlook. You see, I'm a young buck. Living to fight against evil until my toes up. I'm bringing hopes up. Just thinking about where God brought me from. Look. Life. Light is like a room of darkness. You gotta seal it. Hold your brothers to the ground and each other drilling. Religious traditions are mistaken for a God in living. I got a God in a book. I'm right to see living. Mine told the mental prison tradition to pick out the scissors. Let it sit on my own self. Got a mirror vision. I'm not religious. Don't go by traditions. I became the son of God by my own experience. That's all I got. Amen. <laughs>
everybody just for coming out. I know some of y'all thinking that I, I look crazy. I got my Crocs. I'm out here preaching in Crocs. Today was a today was a hell of a day for me. Uh, some of you know, some of you may not know that I do handyman work. So I'm second in command of super. And uh, my mom wasn't all there today. And I was long story short, I was filling up the boiler and uh, I overflowed it. And when I realized I overflowed it, I had to drain it out. When I realized I drained it out, I realized that I kept the lever on, so all this water's coming out. And uh, it was giving steam at the time. It was about 180 degrees. And when I realized that the water was still on, because I'm noticing it's, it's the, the water's rising, 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 and there's so much smoke that I can't see a foot, a, a foot in front of me. I cannot see anything. And it's a small room, so it's filling up with smoke. I'm, now I'm bugging out. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. And me not realizing, me not really thinking, this is what I do. I see it, and I'm, I'm trying to, you know, I look like a retard in the boardroom because I'm trying to remove the smoke to see the lever, and I see the lever that it's on, right? When I realize it's on, I said, oh, my God, I have to go in there and I have to turn it off. And the moment I went in there, I jumped out because it was 180 degree water that was there, and I burned myself so bad. And my feet are blistering up. So don't look at me like I'm crazy, guys. Because right? I ain't going crazy. I say this to say that. Some of us are in the hot water. We feel like we're in hot water. And we're in a trial. And we're in something in our lives that's causing us great pain. That we may not understand it. And God has you in that water. And you're ready to jump out like I try to jump out. But there's a purpose why you're there. There is a purpose why you are there. Because God's trying to show us something. He's trying to teach us something. You know, this theme keeps on coming up of that God won't leave us nor forsake us. That if we're in a season in our life, it's for a reason. And if for a lot of us, when we're in that season, we don't want to stay there. Because one, it's very uncomfortable. It hurts the same way I burn myself. God wants to do something. But he has to bring up the fire a little bit. And we want to hide away. God says no more hiding. God says no more hiding. Because God wants to do something in our lives. And what I really want to share to you today, and uh, most of us go through it at some point or another in our life. We go through it. It's going through that fire, going through that, that uh, stuff in our lives that we don't want to go through. And even right now, we're going through it. And it hurts. And it's uncomfortable. Especially when we're trying to follow Christ. The enemy would love to turn up the water, right? So we can give in. And you don't even got to follow Christ. You just, you just might be thinking, listen, I'm trying to do the right thing. But it seems like every single thing is getting hotter, and it's getting hotter, and it's getting hotter, and I can't take it, and I can't take it. Is that very thing I want to talk about? Is the very thing of quitting? I want to quit. This is too hard. I want to quit. I just want to go. This is too hard. This is not going anywhere. God, where are you? Where are you, God? These are all questions that I know are circulating in this room. God, where are you? Because I was supposed to preach on a whole a totally different other thing. I was supposed to preach on sexual immorality, which we will be talking about next week. But I believe that there's a word for some of you here. And I, I, I may not know who, it's not, for, it's not for me to know who. It's just for me to give the word. You might be feeling, Lord, I'm serving you without a shadow of a doubt. 
but everything is going wrong. Every single thing is going wrong. The more I go towards you, the more that I want to follow you, the more that I want to do things for you, things just don't seem to be working out. They do not seem to be working out. <coughs> Lord, I'm doing everything in my power. And it seems the more that I try to get close to you, the more I feel like you're pushing back. But what's really happening is the more you seek him, the more the enemy will try to push you away. To try to push you You might be saying, listen, I can't take this. I'm waving the white flag. But I'm here to tell you tonight that you are not alone. You are not alone. Because there is someone in the fire with you. And his name is Christ Jesus. And it's he who's going to go with you and through you. See, but there's a specific person in the Bible who wanted to hide away. And was going through a specific thing. He wanted to hide away. He wanted to hide. A specific person in the Bible who had a similar encounter. They struggled with the same issues. And in, and in fact, he was... He was going through it so much that he was depressed and he wanted to die. He wanted to die. He was a man of God. He was righteous. He was just. He did everything that the Lord required him to ask. Yet he was stuck in a place where he felt God had left him. Because the enemy was turning up. Turning it up. Turning up the fire. And in fact, this man was such a man of God that he didn't even see death. He was taken up in a whirlwind in chariots. The person I'm talking about is Elijah. Elijah the prophet. Elijah the prophet. He went through a similar situation. Where he wanted to die. See, but God has, same way God has had a calling for Elijah, God has a calling for you. And there's nothing that you're going through that's going to stop what God has planned for you. It's just not. Because God is faithful and just to complete what he has started in you. No matter what you feel, no matter what you see, no matter what people say. You are here for a very specific reason today. And it's not because of me. I always say this, and you know, people probably get tired of me saying this. It's not because of me. And I need to drill it in your head because I'm just a mere man. Understand that. I'm going to be a man. It has nothing to do with me. The same way God uses me, he can use you. The same way God uses Isaac, he can use you. There's, there's no favorites in the kingdom of God. And we got to get this mindset that, oh man, I wish I could be like this person because this person is used like this. That's a dangerous place to be in. That's a dangerous place to be in. Because God designed you for you. Your calling is tailor made for you because God has designed it for you. So before we get into the word, I just want to I just want to lift this word up and really get into prayer because I believe God is going to do something here today. I believe He's already stirring up hearts and stirring up minds because God wants to do something and God wants to meet each and every one of us here. Amen. Amen. So Father Lord, we just come before you, Father God. We just thank you, Lord. I thank you for this word, Father God, that you have given me, Lord. I, I thank you, Lord, that you are faithful and just, Lord, to let nothing hinder this word. To not, let nothing come before it, Father God. So, Father God, I ask that you just continue to work in the hearts and minds, Lord, of people. Even right now, Father. So, I ask that you just touch the hearts, Lord. Continue to stir the hearts up, Father God. Lord, you know that nobody says by coincidence. You don't know, you know everybody's need. So, Father, I just ask the Lord right now, Father, God, that you meet every person's need. You meet every person's need right now. Let this, let today be a beginning of something new, Father God, that you're doing in them, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, I know everybody has phones. And uh, we're living in a day and age where everything's technology, so you can have the Bible for me app. And if you have the Bible for me app, you can download it. And once you download it, you can go to 1 Kings 19. 
So, 1 Kings chapter 19, we're going to be reading from verses 1 to 18. I'm going to start at verse 1. When Ahab got home, he told Jezebel. Now, he told Jezebel. Now, some people will be, all right, what did he tell Jezebel? For those who don't know. Elijah had a showdown with the false prophets of Baal. It's a combination of things. And long story short, it was a showdown between uh, uh, Baal and the false prophets of Baal and Elijah. And Elijah, I, I love that portion of the scripture because he said, listen, let, let's see, I'm paraphrasing, but let's see who, who's God raise, uh, raise, uh, uh, comes down and, and rains down fire. And he says, all right, I'm paraphrasing. He says, all right, you go first and you see. And, and uh, the prophets of Baal, they, they're calling on their God, they're calling on their God, they're calling on their God, nothing's happening. Elijah's making in front of them. Uh, your God must be sleeping, there's that, well, uh, what's happening? But Elijah says it one time and God uh, brings down fire from heaven. So that's what he's, uh, that's what uh, uh, Ahab uh, Ahab. Uh, wants to tell Jezebel, which is his wife. So Ahab got home. He told Jezebel everything Elijah had done, including the way he killed all the prophets. Yeah, and by the way, he did kill them. So Jezebel sent this message to Elijah. May the God strike me and even kill me if by this time tomorrow I have not killed you just as you have killed them. Elijah was afraid and fled for his life. He went to Beersheba, a town a town in Judah, and he left his servants there. He left his servants there, Judah. And he left, uh, left the servants there, what are we at, verse 4? Three. 3. While he was out for days of journey into the wilderness, he came to a broom of a bush, sat down under it and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. At once an angel uh, touched him and said, get up and eat, he said. He looked around and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. Strengthened by that food, he traveled 40 days and 40 nights. Until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. There he went into the cave and spent the night. And the word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied. I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, tore down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I'm the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of, of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and scattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After, after the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And, the fi and after the fire, a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mount of the cave. Then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have reject, rejected your covenant, tore down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I'm the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. Verse 15. The Lord said to him, go back the way you came, go, and go to the desert of Damascus. When you get there, anoint Hazel king over Aram. Also anoint uh, Jehu, son of Nimshi, king over Israel, and anoint Elisha, son of Zephat from uh, Abel, uh, somewhere there, I don't know. 
to succeed at succeed as a prophet. Elijah wanted to throw the towel in, in his wall by telling God, they're going to kill me. They're going to kill me. I just want to go. Why? Because he was scared. Because the threat posed on him by Jezebel. Now here you are in front of hundreds of false prophets, right? But one woman says a word and you get scared. Because he believed the word. He believed it. That's why he got scared because he believed the word. Jezebel, get this, Jezebel is only metaphorically speaking here. Because Jezebel represents our problems. Things in our life. Things that Jezebel speaks in our life. When life comes down, down hard on us, right? Jezebel is in our ears saying, you're going to get evicted. Bad things are going to happen. What you're praying for is not going to come through. There's always Jezebels in our ear. There's always Jezebels speaking to us. And I don't mean like you're schizophrenic. What I mean is there's always, Satan is always there waiting. Waiting for you to believe a lie. Because if he can get you to believe a lie, right, then he got you already. Elijah gets scared based off of the fact that Jezebel said, I'm going to kill you. Off of a lie. Because God had his life in his hands. The Lord did not tell him that he was going to die. But Jezebel told him. And for a lot of us here, we're letting Jezebels in our ears. Hmm. And we're believing the lie of Jezebel. We're believing it. And then we're wondering why we're caught up in this cave of depression. Wondering why we're caught up in this cave of jealousy, of envy, of stress. Because you're believing the Jezebel in your ear. You're believing the Jezebel in your ear. Jezebel telling you, listen, don't pray for uh, your future husband. Because I ain't going to work. Don't pray for the person you're praying for because that ain't going to work. See, just go say these little things. What she's speaking is lies. And God wants us to stop believing the lies. Another thing that she'll tell us is that your prayers are doing nothing. Your prayers mean nothing. Now, I've been there where I felt, I felt like my prayers are doing absolutely nothing. Any of y'all been there? Yeah, I know. When you feel like your prayers are, uh, Lord, are you even hearing me? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I've been praying, I've been praying, I've been praying, and ain't nothing happening. And we feel like God has forsaken us, and we feel like we're in the cave by ourselves. And you could be in a room full of people but still feel alone. You could be in a room full of Fill with people with me alone. But if you believe in the promises of God, right? You can be all alone and not feel alone. Because his presence is there with him. Your presence is there with you. 
I'm here to tell you, listen, when you feel afraid and you feel like Jezebel's coming for your neck, don't quit. Don't quit. Because the Jezebels in our lives know that there's something coming right around the corner. And that God has something planned for us. And he's going to try to lie to us and get us off track. <clears throat> when those things happen, when the lies come, you look just about right in the face and say, hold on, hold on. I am more than a conqueror in him. In Christ Jesus. He who is greater in me is he who is greater in the world. We have to stand on that promise. That very promise. Because when they come and they try to spread lies, what you got to do, you got to do like Jay-Z. You got to brush the dirt off your shoulders. Come on. And, I, and I'm not saying that to be funny. You got you to brush it off. Plain and simple. Brush it off. Because those are all lies. And if we believe the lie, we're never going to believe the truth. Because you can't believe lying truth. You're going to believe one more than the other. You're going to believe one more than the other. Without those, I feel like, quitting moments, we can't have those I conquered moments. We can't. It's like I, I, I was uh, preaching last week. You can't have uh, the valleys there. You can't have, you can't go not go through the valley and expect a blessing. They go hand in hand. When there's a blessing coming, when God is ready to pull you through some things, you got to go through the valley. Same thing. You can't have those, I, I, I feel like quitting moments. You can't have those I conquered moments when I, I feel like quitting moments. It just goes hand in hand. It just goes hand in hand. Even when we give up on ourselves. So here Elijah was afraid. He felt defeated. He felt depressed in the wilderness. He ran because he was scared. He ran into the wilderness because he, going on the word of what Jezebel was saying, by this very time, May the gods kill me if I would kill you. So he ran because of Jezebel. And the Bible says that uh, he traveled all day in the wilderness. And it says that he sat under a solitude, uh, solitary broom tree. And he prayed that he might die. Now the broom tree usually grows in the wilderness. And here's the interesting thing. That the broom, that broom tree only grows in the wilderness, and it means this. It's a symbol, it's a it symbolizes renewal. Yeah. It symbolizes renewal. If you can't go to Genesis uh, 21. Verses 14 to 48. <laughs> it goes as follows. So Abraham got up early the next morning, prepared food and a container of water, and strapped and he sent away, sent her away with their son. And she wandered aimlessly in the wilderness of the sheep. Where the water was gone, she put the boy in the shade of a bush. Then she went and sat down by herself about a hundred yards away. I don't want to watch my boy die, she said. And she burst into tears. But God heard the boys crying. And the angel of the Lord called Hagar from, the, from heaven. Hagar, what's wrong? Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as he lies. Go to him and comfort him. For I will make a great nation from his descendants. What is the common denominator between these three people? All of them came to that broom tree feeling defeated. 
Elijah went into the bush, which is translated the broom, the, uh, the solitary broom tree. They all felt defeated. They felt defeated. That's what they all had in common. Feeling God's plan was irrelevant for them, that they felt like, well, I guess this is where my book ends. Elijah felt, well, I guess this is where my book ends. Same thing with Ishmael and Hagar. Oh, this is where my book ends. But God is saying, no, this is where your book begins. Because I have a plan and I have a purpose for you. Not to harm you, but to give you life and purpose and a future. This is not where your book ends. But what they didn't know, that God will meet them in their brokenness, in their fear, in their doubting. God will meet them and in their uncertainty. Elijah was very uncertain. He was very uncertain. He thought he was the only one. He thought he was the only one. God said, listen, I got 7,000 uh, 7, more just like you. I deserve because I'm faithful. I'm faithful to you. In the place where they thought it was all over for them, God gave them life and a purpose. God gave them life and a purpose. And it's the same thing for us here. God wants to give you life and a purpose in your calling. God has not forgotten about you. He has not forgotten about you at all. Your story has not ended. God is just opening a new chapter. God wants to open a new chapter in your life. But some of us, a lot of us, we like to stay stuck on that chapter because we like it a little too much. You ever read a book and then you, you no know, man, it's, it's a good chapter. And you want to keep on rereading it. And you stay stuck on it. That's, a, that's what we're doing. We want to just stay stuck in the past. But God says, listen, you're, stay, you're staying stuck uh, on one chapter. I got, I got many other chapters for you. My plan doesn't end on just this chapter. It doesn't end on this chapter. It doesn't. God's saying, close the book and move to the next chapter. And that's a word for somebody. Close. God wants to give you a new chapter in your life. He wants to open up a new chapter in your life. God will say, no, Elijah, your life will not come to an end. I'm just bringing you to a new level. We have to want to let it go and go to a new level. We have to. Because if not, then we're going to stay stuck. We're really going to stay stuck. And God, God doesn't want us to stay stuck. God wants us to elevate. Because God has so much more, so much more for us. So much more for us. And we may not see it. We may not understand it. But God has much, way much for us. There are times, there was times, and still has been times in my life, where I don't see the full picture and I get discouraged. I get discouraged. And I was saying, God, oh Lord, when are you going to use me? When are you going to use me? But it's on God's timing. It's not on our timing. See, because we think God is late and we think God God, you got to show up on my time. And it's not like that. It's not like that. It's not like that. God wants to do so much more. What God did was affirm Elijah. Because he thought it was the end, but he said, no, I preserve 7,000 7, others just like you. Just like you. It is in a secret place where God wants to mold us. God wants to mold us in a secret place. He wants to mold us in the secret place. Christ is not done with us. We're not like trash thrown to the side. But God, uh, God wants to mold us through our trash to become treasure. God wants to anoint us to become more than conquerors. More than conquerors. 
beautiful thing about God is this, is that he sees the trash in us even when we see trash. He sees the treasure in us when we see trash. I'm just going to close out with that. God wants to do something in each and every one of us. He really does. And God is not finished with us. He's not. Amen. At all. He's not finished with us. <laughs> and he wants to do way much more. Way too much more. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I actually want to, uh, I want to pray, but I want the women to pray with the women and the men to pray with the men. We, we're just going to seek the Lord's face. So I believe God is going to do something. I believe we're going to get much more out of doing it this way because, you know, there's some things that need to be released. Uh, it just does. So if uh, men can meet over here and women can meet over here, we just pray out and, and we're good. Also, guys, don't forget, after you're done praying, in the primary room to the right, please. We got some slices for you guys, some drinks for you guys to eat, and fellowship a bit more. That's to the right when you're done. Okay?
right? 